but we have become soft. We have we have given in to or were raised on these modern conveniences. So when we do get thrown for a loop like this last storm here in Maine and people get thrown right back into no electric heat, uh, no running water, no, no microwave, you know, they, they get a little stressed. They, they just do. I, I saw it. I understood where they were coming from, but I also kept telling myself, everyone knew this storm was coming. Everyone knew. Did they think it was not as bad as they were predicting or, ah, I'll just, I'll just tough it out. And they didn't realize it was going to take up to two weeks, right? Some people think if they can't take a shower, they can't get clean. Even though they have water, they don't. A lot of people really do not understand that you can get clean without taking a shower. If you have water, you can get clean. That's one of the biggest things that people ask me, well, how do you shower? Well, in the summertime, I have an outside shower, right? Other than that, I have a, a seven-gallon pot right on the wood stove with hot water in it. Anytime the wood stove is on, I have warm water. I wash my hair in my hair washing bin. I I clean my body out of the out of that same seven gallons. And I am getting clean. You use one to wash up, and then you take that and you dump that that pot out, and then you fill it up again with clean water, and then you rinse your body, right? So I, I don't understand why people think that they can't get clean if they don't have a shower. How did they think how do they think their ancestors did it? Right? Their ancestors had to have survived for them to be here. So we've become very soft. We have and it's not easy work. It's so much easier, folks, to walk in your house and flip a light switch than it is to come in and light an oil lantern, you know, light a candle. The lighting isn't as good as, as lights or lamps in your house. You don't, unless you're going to read or do surgery, you really don't need as much light as people think you do. If you're just going to be sitting around, socializing, uh, whatever, then you don't need a 60 watt light bulb to do that. Whatever the lumens are on uh, an oil lamp sitting on the table or a candle, uh, that's that's plenty enough light to do what I do. I cook. I cook by oil lamp. I cook if I'm cooking on the wood stove, and if I'm mixing like making bread, I have my headlamp on. Uh, I do not sit in my house with a headlamp on. I don't need my headlamp on if I'm sitting around in my house. If I am moving around in my house, I have, I have my oil lamp. I could have a candle. I've got battery operated motion sensor lights. And when I move about, one light will come on. I keep moving through the house and another light will come on. One light will get me to the next light. So I'm not flipping a light switch. It's just I'm walking through the house. The light comes on. The battery operated, right? I have to change them out about twice a year. And go into the next room. Go into the bathroom. The light comes on. When I leave the bathroom, the light goes out. When I leave the pantry, the light goes out. When I leave my house, the light goes out. So it's it's not all bad. You take... Buying the motion sensor, like these are Mr. Beams, and they used to be relatively inexpensive, but they've like quadrupled in price. But they're still, they're still really, really inexpensive for as convenient as they are. So there's no reason why someone couldn't buy a handful of motion sensor battery operated lights and put them above the door, put them in the entryway. So when the power does go out, you, you already have that system in place, right? You already have that system in place. And each one of those Mr. Beams 
uh, motion sensored lights takes four AA batteries and I have to change them out. Uh, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've got seven of them in my house. I've got a 20 by 24. No matter where I go in my house, I've got a light that automatically comes on. So you take seven times four, that's 28 batteries. You change them out twice a year. I use them year round, folks. So I will go through way more than somebody that just uses them when the power goes out. So, but that's real inexpensive. And that's how I choose to live. Now, that's a whole lot cheaper than an electrical bill each month, folks. So I'm not dissing anybody that lived that lives with electricity. I'm not dissing that at all. I'm just saying, get these things in place so when the power does go out, you don't feel so miserable. You don't feel so lost. I'm just that's all I am saying. That when the power went out, people went into a panic. They they weren't living the way their comfortable life was the moment before it went out. They had to work a little bit. They had to they had to think ahead and try to stay warm. And why didn't I get this? And why don't I have that set up? Well, they didn't need it until they needed it, right? Right. So. It's all in what we're used to. My life here is is very very simple. I love how I live. It's I it's not a it's not a lighted stadium in my house. I don't need it to be. What I need is to be able to move around my house so I don't trip and I don't bang into anything. Uh, I need enough light to do that. Housework comes during midday when it's the brightest outside. And that's when I do like my dishes. I sweep my floor. I, I, I burn wood. So I've got dust and I live in a small house. So I, I have dust. So I've got to keep on top of that. Um, th there's simpler ways. And like I said, you're, you wouldn't be here if your ancestors weren't acclimated to how they live. They grew up that way. I understand that. It was a way of life. And just like it's a way of life for me, even though I've got it a whole lot easier than they do, though they did, because, you know, I can just jump in my car and run to the store if I felt like having a snack or if I wanted something different than what I've got in my house. Right? But you take... Uh, you take the way I live compared to the way others live currently now in modern times where there's there's this thing called Alexa, right? Hey, Alexa, what time is it? And it tells you, right? Um, it, it goes from one extreme to the other, and it's all in what you're used to. And if you get thrown into, into a situation where, where that you're not prepared for, and then I'd like to say, well, that's your fault because you should have prepared. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I just get so angry with people complaining that they they can't take a shower, even though they got water and they could wash up. Um, they can't take a shower. Or uh, I, I just don't understand, folks. I don't understand if times got hard and they had to live like I do or even worse. Uh because it could get a whole lot worse for me, too. I might not be able to get out ever. I might ever to town if something were to happen. It could it could be two or three years. And, you know, what if I fall and break my leg or need a doctor, right? Or, or antibiotics. I know the plants out there that are natural antibiotics. If I don't have them stored up from gathering them spring, summer, and fall, if I don't collect them when they are ready to be collected out in the wild, then I don't have any, right? So there's a lot of fore planning. There's a ton of it, folks. So I guess what I'm getting at is you could, you could live on grid, but you could still be set up if you have to live off grid and not even leave your house, you could have motion sensors, light, motion sensor light, extra batteries. You could have candles. You could have gallons of water stored. You could have food that all you have to do it. Well, maybe you just open up a can and eat it cold right out of the can, right? 
Um, but that's the time when you lose power. That's the time when you want pizza, right? <laughs> <laughs> always was me anyway oh i want a pizza ah you know i got three feet of snow on the ground and you can't see in front of you and it's really not safe to go all the way into town uh to get a pizza that's the time you want some of this stuff so anything like that is really good to have in your pantry you know the snacky stuff make you feel more comfortable i i make sure that i have uh, quite a bit of tea here because I really like my tea and why not I've got hot water right on the stove uh, anytime the wood stove is going right so it's pretty convenient for me to I don't have to turn a gas stove on or electric stove it's as long as I have wood and keep the fire going I've got hot water and basically as much as I need if I you know I could haul my water I could melt snow I could melt icicles I could go chop ice out in the bog and and melt that down although the bog is pretty gross I wouldn't want to I I wouldn't I would hate to think that I would ever ever have to drink any part of that water I am pretty sure it's right full it's right full of beaver so there you go and and there's all kinds of ducks in there and turtles and you could you could sanitize it you could you could you could filter it and you could treat it or you could boil it and boil it and boil it and then refilter it and reboil it there's there's a lot of things that you can do and it would just be the idea of it i don't know if you could ever get that smell of the water out of the bog maybe you can i don't know i don't know but if it ever came down to it i i would have I would have to try it, right? I would have to try it. So I, I guess I'm, I guess I'm done. There's several things I want to say. Um, when, when do you dig deep? You don't dig deep after, after the shit has hit the fan. No, you, you dig deep now. Get what you need. So if, when or if the the shit ever hit the fan then it wouldn't be so miserable it wouldn't be such a shock you would you already know what to do you would already know how to do it because you have been learning these skills or at least gathering it the information you need to do these things like filter water if you don't know how to filter water or start a fire if you don't know how to start a fire or make an outside fire pit and what what is burnable wood and what is not burnable wood and how to recognize it and what's good kindling what's not good kindling and how to how to cook over because i can tell you right now cooking over an open fire folks there's a big learning curve there just like cooking on top of a wood cook stove there's a big there's a big learning curve uh it's not like putting a pot of soup on there and just let it simmer on the back of the stove no it's you make bread there's a big learning curve on making making bread on a wood stove folks there's a huge learning curve so but you if you're going to make bread you need all the material right stored right uh in order to have bread right my my favorite recipe is five cups of flour which makes two pan loaves and uh, if you're feeding a family of five or six and you have bread every meal you're going to be going through some flour right right all right folks that's about all i've got and it looks like i went oh my fire is dying down that's good i got a nice bed of coal so i just throw another chunk in good night